Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to this beautiful lady. Her name is Desiree Fantini, and she hails all the way from New, New Jersey in America and is one of our adopted um, citizens now. <laughs> You've been in Ireland since 2006. And one of the reasons that I was drawn to connect with this beautiful soul was a sharing a couple of weeks ago about her journey with um, cancer. And thank you so much. Mindset, the mindset that you have. Thank you so much for joining me. First of all, it's 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 great to have you here with me. What I loved about your post was you can feel the courage, the bravery, the resilience, the strength in your words from that post. And I know that you know, I've dealt with, with cancer personally in my own immediate family. It's quite a ride. It's quite a journey. And I really appreciate you jumping on here with me to to talk about it. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to begin by asking, right now, where is your mindset when it comes to how you feel when you look back? When you can look back on the journey that you've just come on and, and continue to, to venture on. Yeah. Where, what do you think about what you've been through? Um, I think that it was all part of getting me to where I am now. Um, I wouldn't change anything about the journey, um, even the hardest, darkest times, because it's really like given me such an appreciation for life. Um, it's just... When we, we start talking a couple of minutes ago, just prior to um, to recording, we, we talked about the correlation of understanding yourself as a result of, of your journey and your dance with, with cancer in particular. Yeah. And you were talking also about how it intertwines in your journey of awakening. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, as you look back, can you see a correlation and intertwine a web and weave of how and where everything begins? Yes. And if so, where where does that begin for you? I think it begins um, from childhood. Um, as I was telling you about my grandmother who was wounded, um, and she was in an orphanage when she was very young. And because my mom and dad had to work, she was my primary caregiver. So I think later in life, I realized that I was an empath, which is something I never realized before, but I sort of absorbed everything from her, all the negativity, um, and sort of never realized that I was carrying that with me my whole life. And um, I was always sort of in that, state of depression even with a smile on my face you know even with my friends where I'd be partying and you know the life of the party and always having fun but underneath there was always this sadness um and I felt guilty in a way when I was happy yeah. because you know she sort of never allowed herself to be happy because of the different events that happened in her life. So I kind of interpreted that as, you know, you, you're not allowed to be happy. You're not allowed yeah. to, you know. So your, your experience is basically being in the, the company of, of your grandmother. Mm -hmm. you, you felt like you absorbed quite a lot of, of her own trauma. Yes. Without even realizing it. I think that happens to so many of us as, as you know, we're all empaths. We don't, mm -hmm. I don't think we realize the, the magnitude of what we absorb around us in our in our home environments. And so your own environment with, with being in the presence and company of your gran meant that you were absorbing quite a lot of, of stuff that wasn't yours. And you obviously at that age then couldn't decipher no. uh, or separate the two. Mm -hmm. And so when, as you got older then, where did this... Did, did you find actually, sorry, did you find the repercussions of the inability to discern what was yours and what wasn't? And did, did that impact your, your world moving forward as you got older? Yes, because I started to rebel 
um, in the form of, you know, partying too much, um, having serial relationships, you know, with one person and another person. And I think it was because I knew that that wasn't me. It was almost like being brainwashed into thinking that, you know, like it was almost like the way I viewed the world wasn't internally how I, how I would have perceived the world. It was yeah. her perception of the world put on to me. Yeah. Like a filter. So, yeah. yeah. And just rebelled and rebelled. And, um, you know, the sad part was that I found myself just hurting myself yeah. and thinking that it was hurting her, mm -hmm. but it was really hurting me. And, um, and then when I finally in, into my twenties, I was still living at home with my parents. And like I said, they're wonderful to me. Um, I realized I, you know, needed to do something with my life. So I went to school to become a teacher and I was always looking for her approval to like mm -hmm say to me you know well done and she just never could do that and I think it was almost like every action I took was almost like to get her to give me this credit that yeah, I validation yeah yeah I couldn't give to myself for some reason yeah. um yeah and so you moved to Ireland in uh, 2006 mm -hmm. and have been here ever since yes so the journey here then is like another chapter. Yes. So I was teaching when I met my um, ex-husband and we dated for a few years and then he wanted to come home. So I came home with him. Um, my dad always loved traveling. And when he died of cancer um, and he had all these dreams that he wasn't able to experience, I was like, oh, I'm going to go experience them for him you know, and I was also maybe subconsciously trying to get away from that part of my life. So I was running and I was always escaping, you know, and unfortunately, after a few years of living here, I was not able to cope with the homesickness and just feeling like a fish out of water. Yeah. As I sort of stuck out like a sore thumb, um, we moved to a very rural area. It wasn't like we were in the city where I would have blended in. Um, and the marriage just started to fall apart. And the more the marriage fell apart, the more I fell apart. And I had a nervous breakdown um, after having postnatal depression with my children. Uh, my last child in particular was really bad. And I think everything that I was burying came to the surface. Yeah. Did you find when you're in, like, you're on your own in a different country, mm -hmm. really feeling the effects of, of what separation is on a very physical? Yeah. Level. I can only imagine what it's like. Um, you have, you know, people around you that you call family, but don't feel yeah. connected to. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is as you run from one chapter to your life into another, mm -hmm. you're really feeling the separation again physically yes it always has impacts on the relationships closest around us and I heard you say you felt the disintegration of your relationship with your husband which would have been one of your closest mirrors mm -hmm. which leads back into the mirror um revealing ourselves mm -hmm. and um where did that where did that take you when you had the opportunity to to really start to see you yeah. So then I hit basically hit rock bottom because, um, you know, not to anybody's fault, but there was no support there mm -hmm. after the separation from anyone. So I was literally on my own yeah. in a country um, that I at that time didn't want to be in, yeah. which was another reason the marriage, because I just wanted to go home. Um, I couldn't take the children with me because they wouldn't have their father. So I had knew consciously that you know I was going to have to somehow cope with the fact that I had to stay here and I had to be on my own here yeah. um, my mom took off from work she retired and she came out and stayed with me for a while but then eventually she did have to go back 
to America. So um, as I told you in the private call with you, it was like we separated and we, we received joint custody. So the kids were with me four days and they were with him three, yeah. four days that I was with them. It was great. You know, I had my purpose and I'm devoted to them, you know, and I have been always. And yeah. that was what kept me going and kept me alive. Um, but the three days they weren't there, you know, it was just get a bottle of wine, drink the bottle of wine and pass out um, and do it again and do it again um until they come home and it was just really like I thought I hit rock bottom you know other times in my life yeah. but I never really hit it until that point when you're on your own for the three days mm -hmm. um this is a space that's personally uh, familiar to myself as I mentioned um how did it feel like what did it feel like to meet you on those days Mm, it was scared up for you I think just abandonment issues um all kinds of self-worth issues there was no self-love for myself at all yeah. uh, I didn't feel worthy I had a lot of guilt around the the breakup or breakdown of the marriage because I felt like I had a lot to contribute to that breakdown but then at the same time, the way it was handled by the family and the community where I felt like I was completely ostracized. Um, yeah. You know, a few people that I knew would come to me and say, there's rumors going around about you being crazy, mentally ill. Um, so then I would start to hide even more yeah. where I would cut my, completely cut myself off from people because I didn't want people to judge me. Yeah, I didn't want, I felt like I was always explaining myself to people and I didn't want to do that anymore. So my mom came and moved me from the village to a town and she's like, you have to start a new life. You have yeah. to start over. And um, I started to piece things back together, like yeah. build myself back up at that point. But there was still that underlying fight or flight mood that I was always in so you're it's like you could but you could feel your body in high alert mm -hmm. all of the time and you can feel yeah. you can feel tension you know dormant yeah sleeping ready to kind of you know come or go at any at any point yeah so you got a fresh start and you have an awareness of yourself you know at this point that you know life is is in in to Tony showing you rather two very different um pictures the one where you have your role and your purpose and you can identi identify very much with with motherhood and you've something a lifeline to keep pulling you forward and then the opposite which is you meeting you in whatever way shape or form it it, it presented good days yeah. bad days but but riding the roller coaster as you go so when we fast forward then to a time where your world is, you feel like your world is starting to come together. Mm -hmm. Can you share then what the impact was of suppressing all of these, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these aspects of yourself where it took you? Yeah. So I did the three days, four days, you know, with the kids, I had a purpose The three days. I was drinking alcohol to numb myself out. And I did that for a while and um, I was still in that escapism. I didn't want to live in my reality even more. Um, I didn't want to live in my reality when I was living at home with all these people that love me around me. Yeah. Let alone here with nobody, literally nobody. Um, you couldn't escape from it anywhere. I couldn't escape from it anywhere. And I really believe it was showing me, it was like I was being forced to see myself. Yeah. Like no a spotlight put on everything. Yeah. There was no now, more. Can I, I was mm -hmm. going to say, can I ask you now, like from the vantage point that you have now looking back, mm -hmm. can you see any difference between your life in the States, your life in Ireland, as in your deep emotional states, your, your, mm -hmm. 
the the you, the place of your of your thoughts, the places of your of of the things you believed in about yourself, mm -hmm. your emotional state. Can you see any big difference, or can you see how they were all like a map back yeah. in essence to you now? Yeah, they were all a map, definitely. And I think when I was living there, because the lifestyle is so busy, and you're always running. I mean, I was working as a teacher. I was going to school at night to get a master's degree. And I was also working on the weekends as a stylist. Um, like I was doing three and then I was partying and I was, you know, I was constantly going, 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 going. And I don't think I ever stopped to like yeah. really look at myself. But here, because I was isolated is how I felt, you know, um, I lived in a big town in America close to a city. So being in the countryside did feel isolated for me, but Can imagine? it was almost like I had time, too much time on my hands in a way, but that time made me really stop and look at myself and see the parts of myself that I didn't want to see, you know, the, the shadow side of us, yeah. you know, all those bits and layers and pieces. Um, once you start to work through them, you know, you can start to, you know, you have to get into the dirt, like the dirt and the muck before you start to see. Um, a gift in it, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So you're, you're, you can I ask prior to the journey with cancer, were you starting to see the gift in the isolation or was it? The cancer diagnosis did did it take the cancer diagnosis to to really yep you know you think that you've hit rock bottom i've heard you mention it a couple of times and life just seems to take us deeper and deeper until mm -hmm. it really catches our attention and says listen yeah we need to talk was yep. that was the <laughs> cancer diagnosis that moment for you yep. now looking back yep. it yeah. took it, that's how stubborn i was <laughs> it took the cancer to really crack me open fully. Yeah. yeah. So you're um, diagnosed with breast cancer in, in 2016. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, you're in a different country already mm -hmm. feeling the impacts of separation within yourself, mm -hmm. lack of support within yourself. Everything's manifest externally to, to meet what you're really believing. Um, mm -hmm. You get a diagnosis of cancer with two small children as well. Yep. I can't imagine what that must have been like. Yeah. Cancer diagnosis when you've got a um a tribe of love and support around you. Yeah. Is one thing to have this on your own must have taken you even further down this this rabbit hole. I can only imagine. Yep. yep. It did. I actually felt like I was doomed at that point. Um, like all my worst nightmares were coming true. Um, but then I started to get signs, synchronicities and angel messages. And I was actually, I remember this one time, um, uh, my mom was here and I was upstairs and I just had to kind of, when she was, she stayed with me through the whole treatment. So I'll, I'll sorry, I back up a little bit. Hmm. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in both my breasts. I had a six centimeter tumor on the right side with all lymph node involvement, 10 out of 11 lymph nodes. On the other side, it was a smaller tumor. So within two weeks, I had both my breasts removed. They told mm -hmm. me, you can't keep your breasts. There's nothing that we can keep. It all has to go. And then, so within two weeks, they were gone. Um, all the lymph nodes were removed, lost all my hair through chemo. And as I had said to you before, and we were talking about our both of our fathers who died of cancer, um, I watched my dad go through all of that when I was 25 and I was his carer. So I knew all too well was another thing, you know, sometimes when you don't have that insight, it's probably better, you're probably better off. <clears throat> but yeah. I, I saw too much, you know, and I did see him pass away um, from it. So it was just like, talk about being heightened on fight or flight mode. It was it's your preconceived, it's your preconceived um, idea of what, you know, cancer looks like. It's very scary. Yeah. Yeah. And you so had I, that on top of all of that. Yeah. And it was just like, I remember being in a mindset, and this is what I 
try to share on Facebook about your mind, how powerful it is, because I was always thinking about the worst case scenario, you know, and in terms of my children and different things relating to my ex-husband and things like that. And it was just like, I couldn't figure out what my purpose was of being here. So I was always in that negative place. But I got pretty severe news about the cancer. And then I had to go through the whole, and I just automatically assumed I wasn't going to make it, you know, that I was going to be like my dad and I was going to pass away young. My mom came over and like I said, she retired and she came over and stayed with me. And I remember this one particular time I had to use, I usually had to go upstairs and just tell her I was taking a nap because I didn't want to cry all the time in front of her because she had lost her husband. She had lost both of her parents to cancer. And then now her daughter has cancer. And so I would say, mom, I'm going to go take a nap, but I would actually go upstairs to cry in my room. And I remember laying in bed and I was in that hysterical crying where I couldn't stop. And I felt something hold my hand. So it was definitely an angel. Um, and it was holding my hand and it was like all these things started to show themselves to me. And I said to you before, I was able to see spirit when I was younger, but that for some reason was turned off or I, I closed it off during most of my life, but I was able to see my grandfather had appeared to me and my dad, I saw his spirit after he died, but then it was closed off for years. Yeah. So then all of a sudden these things started happening again. So the angel was holding my hand and then from there different gifts started to show up, but the treatment lasted a year. And then they said to me, we have to have all guns blazing to cure you. Um, and as I said to you before, if it was a different receptor or a different type of breast cancer, it probably wouldn't have been as good of an outcome, but it was estrogen positive. So I was able to take estrogen blockers, which I'm on now. And I also had to have a hysterectomy like a euphorectomy, my ovaries had to be removed. So I had that surgery as well. Um, but I miraculously got through it, you know, and was on the road to recovery. And, um, and then all these signs started to show up that you're going to be okay. What a ride. What a journey. I mean, mm. I mean, all listening to you, honestly, and my Thank total you. respect for what you've been through. It's, it's listening to you, listening to you. I can, I can witness trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, you, you said it a couple of minutes ago when you're talking, like even going upstairs under the pretense to take a nap, just mm -hmm. to, to feel, to cry. When, looking back, the one person actually you want probably most in the world is your mum downstairs. Yeah. yeah. And that, like that, that's probably absurd, absurd to listen to in one sense because people are mm -hmm. like, why don't you just go down? But you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's not the done thing. It never was the done thing mm -hmm. in your world. Which, you know, leads me to I'm sorry I'm just I'm absolutely in awe of what you've actually lived through you know and and again even more to get an, an even bigger insight into your journey now is just I feel very humbled first of all to be listening to this and I sincerely mean it thank you uh, so much the importance understanding the importance for me listening to you which is one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you I was very very anxious to talk to you my own mum has just finished treatment for breast cancer equally. And to stress the importance of the amount of times we suppress our emotions, mm -hmm. our beliefs, our thoughts, our experiences, the amount of times that we keep everything in. We don't talk about it. We don't discuss it. We don't even which is something that myself and yourself spoke about was we don't even realize the impact of the likes of something like our childhood has had. 
yeah. how how we have grown up in the environments that we've grown up in, how to the outside world, they look perfect. We don't know any different. Mm -hmm. I have my experience of my childhood. You have your experience of yours. The next person has theirs. And one of the things that really confused me was I had pretty much a picture perfect in my eyes childhood. So mm -hmm. where does all of this, you know, this unresolved stuff come from? Where does something as simple as somebody like yourself in the depths of their fear, terror, grief, loss, mm -hmm. in the depths of that, where do they learn to excuse themselves to sleep, to protect the other person mm -hmm. learned it's all learned yeah we as as humans learn to suppress so much we learn to keep it all in we learn not to talk about it we learn not to feel and listening to your story you know you're talking about you're able to identify what your greatest fear was which is the loss of your own um, everything, you're your, your, your being a mum, what's yeah. going to happen to your children in particular. Yeah. Um, the loss of your uh, the everyday things that we take for granted. Yeah. The capacity to get up, shower yourself, dress mm -hmm. yourself, jump into the car, go somewhere. All of these things, I mean, I can only imagine like a shock to the system. Yeah. You're taken to a grinding halt and the what ifs, the what ifs flood, they flood your entire being. What I also heard you say earlier on was, <clears throat> which is so profound and relevant to every single person, the lives that they've been living have been so busy, so preoccupied, mm -hmm. so distracting from our suppressed stuff. Yeah. That we don't even realize the impact of childhood experiences and adolescence and so forward, the the programming that we we live our daily lives with, until yep. something like like I mean you're an absolute warrior, you're you're you've gone through moving to a different country, relationship breakdown, the relationship breakdown after habitual relationships that mirrored your wounds, yeah, isolation in a different country. Divorce, separation, court battles. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. being there with all of this. All yeah. of this shit, it impacts yeah. you immensely. You yeah. can't even stop. You can't even stop to feel yourself because you are you must keep moving forward, keep moving forward because there's, there's little ones watching and you have to have yeah. your shit together for these. Absolutely. So you can't even feel the grief and the loss of that. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, you, you, you've got a journey with cancer. I mean, this must be even surreal listening to me recite this all back to you. Major surgery, one, one thing after the other. Not to mention that it's actually hit every aspect of your physical femininity. Yeah. Add that to the bag. I mean, it's, it's like yeah. an endless, an endless, bottomless. Yeah. So to have the mindset that you have, the awareness that you have, because we, we, we spoke very briefly mm -hmm. about the importance of knowing yourself. How, how is there any way you couldn't stress to, to anybody listening mm -hmm. your vantage point on the importance of what it means to really know yourself so that yeah. the, you're another person listening so their world doesn't get to this point? Yeah. I think what I would tell somebody is that you just have to be true to you, like to whatever that looks like for you. Like, you know, you're, we're always worried about what other people are going to think of how we live or, you know, our views or it's just like trying Judgment to, of others. yeah, try to fit in this box all the time when you're so much more than that. And I always admired people who were really true to themselves. Like when you always talk about Melissa getting to know yourself, it's such an important thing that, you know, if, if it doesn't resonate with you, 
if it doesn't feel right, if it's not your thing, it's somebody else's thing, you know, aligning with you, no matter what that looks like, no matter what other people say or think, the truer you are to yourself, the happier, happier you'll be. In your opinion, what I had to say a minute ago was, you know, about the importance of aligning with yourself. In your opinion, how do you know? How do you know? How did, how did you know what felt right for you versus what you've actually lived and experienced? I think when I, I know people talk about the awakening and I think it, you know, it definitely happens in stages. But for me, when I really woke up after the cancer, um, it was 2018 when things started to look differently for me. And it's funny how I don't give myself, I guess, the credit as much as I give it to the divine or I was never really a religious person. Um, I always accepted all religions, all people. I grew up in a very diverse part of the world. So it was never an issue of that for me. Yeah. But I guess seeing God in my life through these signs and synchronicities and just the things that I started to become very aware of, like, I remember feeling like all of a sudden that everything I looked at was more enhanced or more magical or more joyful. Um, I can't explain it. It's almost like you're turned on finally. You know, you're not, I guess, I guess I was, the volume was all the way down and now mm. it's all the way up. And I really believe it was, was when it was my time to have that awareness and that consciousness um, because I would have never really, I mean, I was always into certain things that were spiritual because I had seen spirit when I was younger. So I was always open to that, but that was more just with someone who crossed over like I believe in the afterlife and things like that. But this now is like an expanded understanding and view that I can only give credit to the creator or universe, whatever you want to call it. It was like giving me these gifts. And one thing I have connected as far as when you can get the key to your gifts you know, we're always looking for it through other people or outside mm -hmm. of us, but the key is buried deep down inside under all those layers. And you are the only person that can access it. Yeah. You know, and I even look at it too, like a prison cell, you know, when you're let free from prison, it reminds me of that movie Shawshank Redemption mm -hmm. and they're let free. And then they're just like, they don't feel right out there because they've always been in prison their whole life. So when they get wings to fly or when they're, when they get this freedom, they don't know what, what to do. do, with do. It. Yeah. And it's almost like with me too, it was just like, I feel like I'm set free. Like I, I don't have to prove myself to anybody anymore. I get to be myself. The only people that matter to me are, you know, their opinion that matters are my children, you know, that's it. Like, and that freedom you know, everything that I lost, you know, what I've gained is far greater than anything I could have ever lost. You know, it's just the gifts are like, I, I cry every day with gratitude um, for life. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's a far, far yeah. cry from where I was before. It's beautiful to listen to you. I mean, I can... I can I can feel it listening to you like it and I couldn't agree more I couldn't agree more that key is buried deep within and it's buried yeah. deep within for a bloody good reason yeah so that you really let go of the unmerciful amounts of shit mm -hmm. you believe in that yep. you invest your time energy and presence experiencing the feelings the madness of your the mind that is so irrelevant and you talked about the judgments the judgments that we place on ourselves mm -hmm. 
the judgments that even we place on others yeah. because of our own incapacity to access this this information this divinity within ourselves mm-hmm. is crazy as well yeah um and i don't i i agree I, I i don't think i i think so much time is spent looking outside of ourselves for ourselves for for me looking back now this is like the journey of accessing that key that you talk of mm-hmm. and the freedom that's experienced is like the awe in in looking at all of the tiny things that all add up yeah to make the big things yeah it can only actually sometimes be be appreciated when you realize that the only way out is in and yeah. what surrender really 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 looks like yes absolutely 100 percent. and i think it's all mirrored too it's like whatever's going on in here is being projected out there and you're like experiencing that in your reality in your 3d reality and it's like when you get this right you know when you clean this out because it's like people i was listening to Sagru or however you say his name mm-hmm. i love him and he always talks about you know we clean everything around us on the outside and we're always organizing but we don't take the time to clean in here you know and um when this when you get this right everything out here gets aligned and right you know it's just i was living in such a dark place in here that everything on the outside of me was also dark yeah you know can i ask um from your vantage point now when when you look out at the world around you people around you people in the community Mm -hmm. who um are really investing a lot of time energy and presence trying to fix all the stuff outside yeah can you can you see you in them can you see that version of you in them yes and as you see that version of you in them how do you uh how do you then relate to you as in i i feel personally speaking that as we witness the mirrors of ourselves from um past versions a lot of Mm -hmm. compassion is is essential but it's not always easy it's not always easy to see an older version of you around you when yeah you know what you've lived through which is huge i'm sure you wouldn't want anybody to go through your own story no so when you see the people outside of you um tending to all of all of the external yep all the fears programming and yeah everything it's hard it's hard because I'm, I don't want to be the type of person that pushes my views on people. I wouldn't want people to push their views on me. So yeah. I just, I let them kind of do their own thing. Um, I try to say maybe like if my friends will post a lot on Facebook with, especially with the whole election um, in America and everybody was like on either side or it was like so much conflict over it. And I kind of stayed out of it because I thought, you know, everybody has to sort of experience their own journey. Journeys. Yeah. So then to educate people is, is more um, to lead by example, to educate by yeah. leading by example, being the key. Absolutely. Because your, your journey is, is enough for you. My journey is enough for me. Mm-hmm. And so what, what do you do now to to do that, to be the best version of you that you can be so that others can, um, can learn from your story even. Yeah. I try to share things. Um, a few of my friends have said to me, you know, I can tell you're in a good place from some of the things that you post. Um, I guess just maybe to give people a different perspective that it's possible to go from that place to hear, you know, um, just as you said, as an example, to show people that there is hope, you know, that your life can change for the better. Um, 
you know what, it's funny that all these sayings that you hear your family members saying, and I remember one person in my family used to say a leopard doesn't change their spots, Mm -hmm. but I believe that I know that we can change. I've changed, you've changed, you know, we've both evolved. And I think that, you know, it was some movie, I think it was Rocky or one of the movies that said, you know, if I can change, you can change. If you can change, the world can change. Yeah. And I think when you work on yourself and you see the transformation in yourself, you know, it's possible. So then if I can do it, you can do it. If you can do it, we all can do it. And I think that's the direction the world's going in now. I think because we are evolving, um, that we are leading by example. And I think that's the way to move forward with change because, you know, trying to force your views or your opinions on people. And even for us, as we evolve, we know this, that our opinion might be something today and then in a month from now, or a week, a day, the way things are going, (laughs) the way we're shifting. And, you know, it's like things are changing so quickly, even in our own perspectives on things yeah there was there was so much of what you've just said that I'd love to to go back to a leopard can't change its spots but it can definitely embrace them yeah and in embracing the spots that's where your expansion is found I believe absolutely um you have a difference of an opinion from me I -hmm. have a difference of opinion in you and our differences are exactly that. They are what separate us. Um, you know, it's, it's our uniqueness, not separates us, but it's yeah. our uniqueness then that that is celebrated. And I think in a world where if I can accept and celebrate my spots, for want of a better analogy, and you yeah. can do the same, yeah. then we get to be more and more of ourselves and we get to access the root to finding that key within ourselves that ultimately yep. grants us the freedom that we've been looking for, which is the freedom from any uh, limitations, any programs, yep. any um, judgments, any you know attachments even that we have to anything that's not true, not ours. Yes. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a phenomenal journey. Like I, I said to you before, I'm I'm genuinely in awe of it. The journey of our of our lives, the journey yeah. of our expansion. That's what we're here for. Because Absolutely. change is inevitable, suffering is optional. And I think that the more that we try to live within the constraints and limitations of what another person thinks or believes or judges mm-hmm. about us, the more that we're going to stay bound to the chains that we've placed ourselves in. Absolutely. And the chains that have we placed ourselves in based on like I said you spoke about this at the very beginning um program pro- programmings imprinted with our environment society uh, yep. the viewpoints of other people um our families whatever it might look like I don't care at this stage because yep. all I care about is um personally speaking my own expansion my own evolution my own yeah. acceptance of the fact that we live in a world where change is guaranteed yeah absolutely and the polar and, yeah. like in the world and the polarities in ourselves it's like you're merging them when you're doing the work you know that's what the shadow work all that work that we've done the inner work because people mm-hmm. say well work what does that mean you know it's really hard to explain um but that work of merging those polarities it's like that's what we're doing also on the world stage you know we're trying to neutralize yeah 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 neutralizing that polarity so that it doesn't have an active place in our field yes in our inner world or our external world to neutralize that within ourselves so that we can come to a place of balance so that when the shit does hit the fan we can actually ground everything around us yeah because we've grounded everything within us yes that's one of the biggest changes i've seen in myself is not reacting like years ago it was like you know if somebody pushed my buttons enough times i would react in a negative way and Mm. when you and even when you hear bad news or when things go wrong it's like the place i've come from 
with handling that now is so yeah. different. And if we can all get to that place, you know, where we can handle things in a more peaceful way, yeah. you know, our own lives. And then the little things. Yeah. And, 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 and the little things are, you know, for me, just listening to or reflecting back on this entire conversation, the little things are questioning. What, what do I believe about myself? Mm-hmm. why do I believe that mm-hmm. why do I think this why do I feel this and it's not to rehash your story or your wounds or anything yeah. in a in a let me hold on to this shit even tighter yeah to understand my why yes and when I understand my why it means when my back's to the wall or I'm in a situation that life throws a curveball at me I have the bandwidth to know I have a choice yeah in how I respond to this or how I react to this. And yes. I think that's very, I think personally speaking, that's overlooked so much. Yeah, it Your is. Your choice in the in those tiny moments, because it's, yep. it's those moments that compound, I have no choice, I have no choice, I have no yep. choice, I have no choice. Why? Yeah. Because such and such a person said this, or I'm going to be this. Yep. I'm go- it's, oh my God, it just blows my circuits even thinking about it. You're so right. And if we can, if we can stabilize that, individually to tap back to what you said I think that is how how the the picture changes in the world Mm -hmm. then you you've got a lot of people on the planet working from a balanced centered place yeah owning their shit taking accountability and responsibility for themselves because you are a prime example of what it has how do I even say this A prime example of a human in an experience where you have literally, you know, no other option but to accept what is before you. Yes. And listening to what you shared, it was in your acceptance of what was created on some other level by you, for you, for your highest growth and expansion. Yep. And from a place of unconditional love of yourself that has taken you to this moment right here at this second where you've shared this beautiful and amazing story. Thank and you I just so want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing it. And I really hope that, that you know, this has the impact that that, that it, it, it should, that, that people pay attention, you know, like you said, not to not to copy what you have done or experienced but to pay heed to their own world mm-hmm. so that it doesn't um it doesn't amplify to the point where they feel like they can't do anything yeah but thank because, you thank you so much what you just said about acceptance i think we spend our whole life resisting what is happening and that's part of the suffering you know and um when you get to a place of acceptance and trust and self-love um things seem to work out yeah you know? I, I to add to what you just said I think we perpetuate our own suffering when we keep looking externally for the validation that we've been searching yeah. for our entire lives within ourselves yes our entire lives looking for that validation where we could never be found through the wounds and the eyes of another yeah it's Absolutely. kind of heartbreaking isn't it really yeah yeah and I mean it's not easy I'm a work in process and progress I think I'm going to be for the rest of my life. I don't, yeah. every time I think I've, I've got acceptance nailed, I get served a, a lesson in what it means to go deeper or uh, surrender. You think you've surrendered now? Let me show you again. Let me show yeah. you again. Let me show yeah. you. I'm, I'm humbled by it every time. Yeah. Every time. Absolutely. <laughs> There's some moments I'm kind of there going, oh shit, again, again. Yeah. Do I, I ever know. learn? Am I ever, but, but it's not even to change that. It's yeah. to, to understand that you're expanding and expanding and expanding. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, yeah, yeah. We 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 contract every time we we go up against the mm-hmm. the gift of that expansion. Going, oh shit, again, yes, again, again. Yep. <laughs> again. And and the more we allow that to flow through us, I think, you know, I don't think you'll ever. This is just my theory. 
mm-hmm. and what I'm experiencing, the validation that I've sought outside of myself just grows and grows and grows internally now yeah. that I realize and I remember I am enough and I am worthy and I am loved yeah. as you are and the next person is and the next person we're all just winging it. Yes, absolutely. That's really Listen, cool. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me for this conversation it was beautiful to listen to again I'm humbled by you know what you've shared here and I really hope that it touches the hearts of of everybody listening thank so, you thank you and it was thanks to yeah. everybody joining us here um just soak it all in <laughs> until next time thank you much bye. nicer bye 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 Thank <laughs> you.